Welcome to today's lesson on adding and subtracting mixed numbers with unlike fractions. Today we're going to use the four square method. The first thing we do is write the problem. And we have three and three fourths minus two and one third. Next, we're going to look for the least common denominator. And in our fractions, we have the denominator four and three. So next, we find the multiples of 4 and the multiples of 3. We keep listing multiples of each number until we find the least one they have in common. And in this case, it's 12. So the least common denominator is going to be 12. The next step is to rewrite the problem and use our new denominator. So we rewrite 3 and 3 fourths and 2 and 1 third. Then we come over here and we put the new denominator of 12. We also bring our whole numbers over and the subtraction sign in this case over. If it was addition, we'd bring over the addition sign. Then we have to look and see what we multiplied 3 by to get our new denominator of 12. We multiplied by 4. Remember the golden rule of fractions. What you do to one, you must do to the other. So we're also going to multiply by four to our numerator. So you can see right here, we multiplied the numerator and denominator by four, and one times four is indeed four. So our new mixed number is two and four twelfths. Then we come up to the top, and we see that four times three will give us twelve. So we also have to multiply our numerator by 3. And 3 times 3 is 9. Now both of our mixed numbers have the same denominator, and we can go ahead and subtract. 9 minus 4 is 5, and we keep our denominator the same. It just stays 12. And 3 minus 2 is 1, so it's 1 and 5 twelfths. And the last step is to simplify if possible. And we have 1 and 5 twelfths. It's in lowest terms because the greatest common factor of 5 and 12 is 1. And remember, when your greatest common factor is 1, you're done. So 3 and 3 fourths minus 2 and 1 third is 1 and 5 twelfths. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 and 3 fourths minus 1 and 7 eighths. The first step is to write my problem, and I have. And the next step is to go ahead and find the least common denominator. So in the next step, I've listed the multiples of 4 and 8, only a few of them. And I can see that they both have 24 and also 16. Now, I really could use either the 24 or the 16, but remember, you want to keep your numbers as small as possible. So the least common denominator in this problem would be 16. That way, if I use the 24, I would have to do more reducing. And the next step is to rewrite the problem. And I'm going to put what my new denominator is and move over my mixed numbers. So I've moved over my whole numbers and have my new denominator of 16, which was my least common denominator. Now I have to figure out what my numerators are going to be. So I'm going to start down with the fraction on the bottom. And 8 times 2 is what I multiplied to get 16. So I'm going to do 7 times 2, which is 14. And up top, 4 times 4 got me 16, so I'm also going to do 3 times 4, which is going to be 12. Now I do have the same denominators, but I don't have enough in terms of my fraction to go ahead and subtract, so I'm going to have to go next door to the whole number and borrow. So now I'm going to go ahead and borrow from the one whole. The 3 is going to become a 2. 
And remember over here, I've borrowed one whole. And because my denominator is 16, it's really like borrowing 16 sixteenths. And you add that to what I already have, which is the 12. So in this case, what you really could do is just add your denominator and your numerator. And 16 plus 12 is 28. So 2 and 28 sixteenths is the same as 3 and 12 sixteenths. I now can go ahead and subtract. I'm going to put down my denominator because that stays the same. So there's my 16. And when I subtract 8 minus 4, I'm going to get 4. And 2 minus 1 is 1. So I have 14 sixteenths. And then subtract my whole numbers. And 2 minus 1 is 1. So I'm going to come over here to the last step where I'm going to simplify if necessary. I have 1 and 14 sixteenths. 14 sixteenths is a proper fraction, so I don't need to do any switching to a mixed number. But I do see that my 14 and my 16 can be reduced. So I'm going to bring that whole number over. And then 14 and 16, their greatest common factor would be 2. So I'm going to divide by 2. Fourteen divided by two is seven, and sixteen divided by two is eight. So my final answer is one and seven eighths. So three and three fourths minus one and seven eighths is one and seven eighths. The second problem we're going to take a look at is two and one fifth minus eight and one half. We have the problem, and then now the next step is to go ahead and find the least common denominator. I listed out several multiples of 5 and 2, and I found that the least common multiple is 10. Therefore, our least common denominator is 10. Now it's time for us to rewrite the problem. I made a brief mistake earlier. I meant that we were going to add, not subtract. So you can see there's a little change. Instead of subtraction sign, we now see a plus sign. But no worries, it hasn't changed anything at this point. Okay, so we have 2 and 1 fifth plus 8 and 1 half. And we're going to rewrite our problem using our least common denominator, which is 10. So we'll move over our numerators. Or not on right, we'll move over our denominator, which is the least common denominator of 10, and our sign and our whole numbers. So now I need to go ahead and figure out what my numerator is going to be. So I'm going to start down here at the bottom. And to get 10, I had to multiply 2 times 5. So I'm also going to multiply my numerator by 5. 1 times 5 is 5. And coming up here to the top, I had to multiply 5 times 2 to get 10. And so I'm also going to go up here and multiply by 2. And 1 times 2 is 2. Now I can go ahead and add my mixed numbers. Remember, we're just going to copy down that denominator because that we don't do anything with. We're just going to put that 10 down. And 2 plus 5 is 7. 2 plus, now we can add our whole numbers, 2 plus 8 is 10. So I have 10 and 7 tenths. And my last step is to simplify my answer if possible. I also have to look and see if that fraction is an improper fraction, but it's not, so we can go ahead and leave it. And if we go ahead and we want to try and reduce, the greatest common factor of 7 and 10 would be 1. Therefore, we are done. And this is as reduced as far as possible, so our final answer is 10 and 7 tenths. Any questions? Make sure to see your teacher, and don't forget to use that notebook as a resource.